I've been in the USA shooting my next documentary, The Longevity Film. It's been super fun. <laughs> And aside from filming a bunch of content all over the place, I also got to spend some quality time at one of my favourite waves in California, trestles. I surfed uppers a bunch and enjoyed watching it back on the surf cam, but lowers tends to be a better wave. Not only is it a more high performance wave, but the level of surfing on display is always incredible to watch. Today I want to have a look at some of the surfing done by the pros during my time at Trestles, in particular Kaloe and Dino. He's having a stellar year on the world tour and he's probably one of my favourite surfers to watch. So let's really hone in on how pro surfers do their turns with such speed and power that it almost forces us to watch. I'm Kale Brock and this is How To Rip's Lesson of the Week. Make sure you subscribe now and you can join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. Let's go. If we compare my own surfing to that of Kolohe's, we notice immediately that there is an edge, a springiness and electricity that Kolohe brings that far outweighs my own abilities. Yes, Kolohe was generally on better waves than myself on this day, but there's no arguing he absolutely capitalised on those opportunities. <music> It's this electric edge that pro surfers bring to their turns that really sets them apart from the average Joe. But where does it come from? Well, besides the obvious, surfing every day in great waves and being paid to do it, I think there are some techniques here that we can really hone in on and replicate to get some similar results. I want to talk about shoulder rotation for a moment. Now since coming home from the US and Greece, I've been getting back into coaching and I'm noticing straight away that a lot of people aren't using their shoulders correctly, or at least effectively. And we've talked about rotation a lot on this channel because that's essentially what surfing is, minor or major rotational changes whilst on a wave. I'm going to isolate the shoulders, but I want to move forward knowing full well and having you guys knowing full well that's it, that it's actually a full bodily process. I'm going to show you two different turns of mine in order to highlight the effectiveness of shoulder rotation. The first is this one here at Malibu. I get a nice boost of speed at the start of the wave and then spot the section for a turn. Everything up until this point is quite appropriate from a technique standpoint, but have a look how I complete the maneuver. Notice how I sort of cut the turn in half. I didn't complete it fully, and it ended up looking a little bit undercooked or stale, if you will, as a result. This is because I didn't allow my left arm, my leading arm, to fully open up. Instead, I kept it close to my body, and as such, my turn didn't fully materialize. Let me 
me show you a better example of that same sort of turn. On this wave here, I perform the maneuver as a finishing turn, so not worrying about what the rest of the wave is gonna do actually gave me enough confidence to open up my shoulders because I didn't have to worry about missing the rest of the wave. It's a very mental approach, mind you. I want you to notice how my arms really go through some serious rotation during this turn, which causes the board to do the same. Also of note is the arm positioning. The leading arm really anchors during the final part of the turn to fully pull the rotation of the board back a tiny bit more than normal, resulting in more spray and a more radical turn. I've actually been experimenting with this position a lot lately, as you can see here in this small photo sequence. It's something best exemplified, I think, by John John Florence as well. This hiked left arm at the end stage of a cutback, and I think it really translates to a nice turn if you keep your other arm, my right in this instance, nice and conservative. If you start going full flight mode with your arms and have both out at the same time, you can look a little bit silly. Watch how the first half of the turn, that back right arm is higher than the leading arm. In the second half, it transitions and the left becomes higher. This actually indicates which arm is anchoring the change of direction because a higher arm slows down forward momentum and causes more rotational change. This is a really important concept to understand. If we analyze Kolohe doing a beautiful turn here, we see that he ticks all of these boxes with effortless grace. size of the wave has to come into play as well. On tiny waves, it's really hard to do big, powerful wraps because one, there isn't enough speed to work with, and number two, there often isn't enough space to work with on the wave. And I think this is why it's important to really capitalize on these techniques when the waves do finally cooperate and get bigger than about chest high. So how does this work on one's backhand? Well, if you're like me, you may have struggled with backside surfing at some point throughout your surfing career. But I think if we focus on these fundamental techniques, we can absolutely overcome some stagnation in this area. Let's break it down. Backhand surfing is almost the mirror opposite to what we've just spoken about. However, our back is now facing the wave and we have to rotate more extensively to identify and look at the sections during the beginning stages of any turn. See how the arms become anchoring opposites now. The leading arm now anchors the first half of the maneuver while the back arm anchors the second half. Doing powerful turns on the back end requires commitment and good rail engagement from the beginning of the maneuver. The surfer must spot the section and then get low in order to coil and save his power until the top of the wave. Note that for a wrapping turn or cutback style turn, he or she can't go too vertical for a cutback because it doesn't leave enough time or space to perform the turn. 
On the back end, there is more of a pronounced weight shift that occurs during the turn. The body must shift over the surfboard and back down the wave to force the change in direction. Overall, note how the arms are used more subtly on the backhand turn and the legs and hips become much more pivotal. The final flick of the turn is mostly initiated by extending the lower body against the wave. Watch someone like Dane Reynolds perform these radical backside turns and you'll definitely learn a thing or two. The key thing on the backhand is to constantly consider the rest of the wave. I often find that with too much commitment to a turn, I'll lose all the speed that I have and get caught behind the white water. You can catch up sometimes, but not always. So always try to surf with flow and correct speed spending. This video helps you guys out with performing some big turns out in the surf. I really appreciate you guys being here and I must apologize for being away for the past month. I mean, you've had to put up with Risey for the... <laughs> oh gosh. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Post any questions that you guys have in the comments below. Let us know what else we should cover. And of course, join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. We can go surfing together. You can keep up to date there as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you soon. Woo!